All right, everyone, it's Sleepy Doctor time with Ben Carson. He's come out to back up Trump on his Baltimore statements. It's like, it's a no-brainer, but the, the optics of it are good. And on the surface, you'd say, well, that's because Ben Carson is black, and but that doesn't really matter. You see, the Democrats have gotten into the habit of calling uh, black people names if they step out of line. They've done this over and over again. I, I mean, I can't even use the same terminology they use without probably getting a content strike. They do it all the time on, <laughs> on, on regular cable and have no problems with it because, you know, there's a double standard there, I think. Just saying, a little bit of a double standard. No, it's because Ben Carson is seen as the harmless, sleepy doctor. Now, I, I saw through that during the election, in the, the campaign, uh, before he dropped out of the Republican primaries in 2016. And I looked at him and I said, he, he seems a little bit cultish. Like, he had like a picture of himself with Jesus in his house and weird shit like that. And he just seems, he is a scammer, after a fashion, although one that didn't break the law. Um, basically, his campaign netted him tens of millions of dollars in, in, I think, like book sales and shit like that. He made out like a bandit. That being said, though, he is perceived, again, perception over reality. He's not perceived as a cutthroat politician type. He's perceived of as a, uh, a sort of a sleepy, soft-spoken individual, kind of harmless. That really helps because he's talking about it. He's, he's coming out. And part of his defense was, yeah, I would love it if Trump, you know, came here and he could see things. But then, and then this is the real kicker, the way he defended him. He said, but Trump sometimes gets exasperated and thinks, well, I'm just going to get booed at and people hate me, so why should I even bother? It sh it's, it's an attempt to inject a human side of Trump into the issue. Which, number one, I mean, it's not going to work with a hyper-partisan. It's not going to work with someone who's really far left. But, you know, say, say someone's a centrist living in Baltimore. Yeah, that could resonate. Certainly, if they hear the message from Carson himself, if they saw it covered at all, that could, that could definitely ameliorate things with that part of the electorate. And that's not an insignificant thing. And the other thing I would say is, Trump's comments on Baltimore are simply objectively correct. There is no argument over it. Yes, Baltimore is a high-crime location in the United States. It's a place that generally lacks opportunity for the disadvantaged. It's a place that has been made this way by successive far-left administrations. That's just the way that it is. That has nothing to do with the race. If you take a white population, let's say you had a, a heavily uh, dense city, something like Baltimore, fill it with people who are largely white, but you give them a corrupt city government that fucks around with their money over and over for 50 years, do you, do you think that they would have problems? Yeah, I think that they probably would. In fact, we've got examples of this sort of thing happening as well. It's interesting how the Democrats and some Republicans all ignore these things. Hell, they don't even have to be in a big city. West Virginia exists, dude. There's a reason uh, uh, that people are getting tired of these wedge issues. Now, ben Carson backing him up is important primarily because of the optics. He has nothing to do with the strategy in the pure sense. Ben Carson is, he's on the right. He's more traditionalistic. Politically speaking, you know, he's probably further right than Trump. He's more moralistic, that's for sure. Um, and I can see through sort of the charade <laughs> that was used to sell the line that was Ben Carson. Uh, but him being involved is pretty great. It's very, very funny how he just gets sort of thrown into HUD. And he gets one of these jobs where, I mean, he, he could end up staying there for quite some time, flying under the radar, so to speak. It's funny also because when he was put in HUD, uh, when Trump appointed him, the liberals screamed bloody murder. Oh my god, like the housing and urban development, he's going to destroy the cities and stuff. And then you literally having a debate over the inner city. It's represented in part by Elijah Cummings, who swears up and down that there's no problem there. Didn't his home just get burglarized the other day? Now, this may be a meme. I didn't look into it too deep because, you know, I'm about to go to bed. I got other things to do. Um, I, I think there were reports that Elijah Cummings' own home was burglarized the other night. If that's true, it's ironic. Not saying that I wish that sort of thing on anyone, but it is an irony. Very interesting. Very odd times we live in with the Democratic Party. Liberals at large are pretending that the inner city doesn't have problems. No, no, we don't need any more money for the programs or anything like that. There's no problem here. 
Crime? What crime? A ghetto? The ghetto doesn't exist anymore. It's everything's squeaky clean. How dare you, you horrible racist? It's like the left has devolved into name-calling to the point where they don't even want to address issues. It used to be like, hey, you're, you're problematic because you don't want to admit that there's a problem. Now it's you're problematic because you admit there's a problem simply because of the demographics associated with that problem. The left has gone nuts. These people don't know what they're doing, so it's really funny to watch. Uh, ben Carson slamming them and backing up Trump uh, in a very effective way, I think. Uh, assuming that a person is politically adequate enough that they actually know that this event happened. Like, a lot of people have a short attention span, so probably after the first 24 hours, they forgot all about Trump's Baltimore tweets. By then, they had heard from CNN, oh, racist, racist, and so they just sort of left it at that. If they have a longer attention span, though, I, I have a feeling that there's a disconnect at this point. And that people who know more about politics pay attention to politics more and dig a little bit more deeply, largely back Trump. People who pay attention but only on the surface back the Democrats. And people who don't know jack shit are all partisans, so they back one or the other by default simply because they have an R or a D after their name. So I think the truly adept uh, uh, people in the country are worried for the Democrats if they are an ideological leftist. You look at Michael Moore sweating bullets and rambling about Michelle Obama running to save the Democratic Party. It's just like, you know, your time is up, dude. At some point, you just gotta fucking give up the political ghost. Realize you've been left behind, number one. You don't know what you're talking about, number two. And then neither do the Democrats, and they're not gonna listen to you for anything anyway, number three. It's not gonna help. Fuck off. By the way, Michael Moore needs to eat a tuba. He's withering away. All the dieting is uh, destroying his brain cells, just like it did Bill Clinton. You know, Bill Clinton, he gets too thin. He starts getting fucked up. Michael Moore needs to go have, like, a five-course steak dinner, and then he needs to chow down on some nachos. He needs to fill back in, because he's lo it looks like he's lost 50 to 100 pounds, and he's just withering. He looks like an emaciated turtle, you know, after it catches some dread tropical ailment, and it's just slowly melting away inside of its shell. Uh, it's, it's grotesque, to tell the truth. That's about all. Peace out.